Item C.2 on the Western Ground Business Meeting Agenda is defining first full day. Move to amend section 3.12 of the Westercon bylaws by inserting wording to clarify what the first full day of Westercon is for site selection purposes. It would add wording to the end of the existing 3.12 bid presentations, which by the way, it's basically the only thing that affects is when bid presentations must be scheduled. The first full day of the convention is the latter of A, the first day that the convention has scheduled programming starting before and afternoon, or B, the day on which the convention has an opening ceremonies or a reasonable equivalent if there is such an event. Uh, the chair recognizes Mr. Van Ark to make the motion. <coughs> Hello again. Uh, this is, uh, year has been a little bit more of an anomaly. Usually the 4th of July is not on a Wednesday. But we did have some concerns about people who were traveling and didn't realize the business meeting was going to be on Thursday, our first full day of programming as far as we were concerned. Uh, because the bylaws do use the term first full day of programming without really saying what they mean by that, we thought it might be useful to add clarification uh, or at least uh, set expectations for what that would mean going forward. You said um, business meeting meant the presentations. You said business meeting. Thank you. I, I did miss it. Uh, bid presentations are uh, required by the bylaws to be on the first full day of the convention. But bylaws don't say that. Uh, what that is. So, thank you. Okay. Mr. Oaks. Okay. Move to amend the proposal by removing the text reading the latter of A, after, and or B, and all the text following and adding the following between the words programming and starting, and that is, and other major convention functions for the general members, and then parenthetically examples including dealer's area, art show, and convention or hospitality suite. So that the full text reads, the full day of the convention is the first day that, or the first full day of the convention is the first day of, that the convention has scheduled programming and other major convention functions for general members, examples including dealer's area, art show, and convention or hospitality suites starting before noon. Is there a second for the member's motion? Second. 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 As the speaker of the motion, you get initial right to speak to it. Debate <coughs> is five minutes and then we divide it between the sides. Okay. I believe that this is a better definition of the first full day of the convention because it encompasses not just programming, but all of the fundamental operations of the convention, what people expect the convention to be doing. And as a former Westercon chair, my Westercon, we had opening ceremonies on the first day, which was the Thursday of the Thursday through Sunday convention. We did not have dealer's room open or art show or I believe con suite open until well afternoon. I did not consider that the first full day of the convention. The mandated program item was on Friday. As a matter of fact, we had site selection open on Thursday and Friday because we needed to have the business meeting on Saturday so site selection could be, you know, so that the Western seated, newly seated Westercon could have Saturday and Sunday to sell memberships. And that worked. And that is how most Thursday through Sunday and I think Friday through Monday and even probably Saturday through Tuesday Westercons have functioned. It's only in the rare case of the somewhat Wednesday through Sunday Western Con that this gets confusing. And even the last when time Western Con was held on a week with this calendar, it really started well afternoon on Thursday. So it was just this year when you had some programming on Wednesday night that this and you started a little earlier on Thursday, this confusion developed. So if this amendment does not pass, I do urge rejection of the amendment as it's stated. Thank you. Speech against, and I'm going to recognize Mr. Van Ark. I, I had a question about the reading. Was, was that inclusive? Uh, please that it, stand and address your question to the chair. Sorry. Uh, question on, on the, the wording. Was that inclusive? It had to have all of those things, or was that just representative? The chair rules the list was indicative. It was not exclusive. Thank you. All right. Uh, I also have a question for the chair. Okay. Is it required to have programming and other events before noon or programming for other events before noon. The wording does not make that clear. That's a really good question, honestly. 
I did put the word and in there. Okay, so it is programming and other events in the, is actually in the wording. I don't actually have the event. I saw it earlier, but I don't have the exact wording. Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, yeah the, Linda has it. Okay, that's it. The moment then I have to look at it. It has scheduled programming and other major convention functions. It requires both of them. Okay, so program and any of the other major yeah. convention functions. So the dealer's room, but not the art show, will suffice. Correct, yes. Any one of the, any one of the things on the example list or something that is ruled to be similar counts as one uh, as having met the requirement. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, Mr. Blog. Uh, I gotta get to time that just used up. That was one minute of neutral material. Okay. Um, Gary Blog, I'm actually in favor of, for the most part of Mr. Oaks's amendment. Uh, in that case, but, well, no, 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 the only thing I object to is just the uh, the hospitality functions because that's really not a major function along the lines of um, programming like panels and um, opening ceremonies. That's the only part I object to is just including the hospitality aspect of it. Uh, well, yes. Mr. Kvalchuk. I'd like, I'd like Is this a speech in favor? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the chair had already you ruled. Have one minute, by the, way. the chair had already ruled that it needed to be one of those things. So even if hospitality is not considered a major function, any one of the other major functions would suffice, and it needs to be programming. And someone has programming before noon, and has hospitality before noon, and has nothing else. It seems to me that's good enough, and I think we should stop arguing about how many angels we can fit on a pinhead and just be done with this. <laughs> Time for debate in favor of this proposal has expired. Who would speak against it, Mr. Bloom? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm Kent Bloom, and I think all of this is kind of uh, overdoing it. I have the same objection to this that I had to the earlier one in that we're trying to over-specify and over-prescribe. And we should really leave all of these things, both uh, the, to the individual committees, which are quite capable of declaring one of the first days of the convention to be the official first day of the convention. It just doesn't matter that much. And trying to actually have this where people will be sniping at convention committees because they did or didn't do exactly what they were supposed to do um, is simply a waste of time and energy. I would urge the defeat of both the uh, amendment and the motion. Just a moment. There's 45 seconds. There's 45 seconds of debate time against the motion remaining. Uh, Ms. Zawarski? Point of... Uh, yeah, against the motion or against the amendment? Against the amendment. The, the, the pending motion is the amendment. I would think. I also agree that this is putting way too much specification into the bylaws. We have already things specifying when voting at con ends as being the next or last day of the convention. This is all very ambiguous. Um, I will support um, voting against the amendment, voting against the main the main amendment, and I was going. I will propose something to be brought up next year to just make it easier to define what the first day is, what the last day of the convention is. I had difficulty because I had to make airplane reservations before I knew that there was going to be programming on the day before the first day of the convention. Time for debate on the amendment has expired. A majority being necessary to adopt the amendment only, not the constitutional amendment, but the change, the proposed change to the amendment authored by uh, Mr. Oaks. All those in favor of the amendment only, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. Hands down. The chair believes the negative has it. Call for a serpentine vote. Serpentine vote. Yeah, I don't think I, I'm going to. I'll take the word for it. Then. Okay. A serpentine vote. Most, most of you know this. You get the hang of it. I'm going to ask for people to. We're going to ask first for those in favor of the proposal to stand, and then we'll count off. And then I'll ask for those opposed to it to stand, and then count off. Everybody in favor of the amendment only, please stand. Okay. Start from, we're going to go back and forth, all the way across and back, starting here. Say your number and count off. One. And then sit down. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. nine ten. Eleven. 
Those poets we sang. <laughs> No. Uh, we'll start here. Eight. No. One. one. Remember, we'll, if, if you want to be counted, count, take it seriously. One. Thank you. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. On the amendment, there are fourteen in the affirmative and sixteen in the negative. The negative has it. The amendment fails. We are back to the proposal as written, and we have used up all of the debate time for the proposal entirely. Mr. Kvalchek. Move to extend debate by two minutes. Two minutes. That'd be about one speech for and against it at this point. Is there any? Okay, I, I'm, okay, there's a second. All those in favor of extending debate by two minutes, raise your hand. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. It's close, but the affirmative appears to have it. The debate is extended for one minute. That'll be the time for one more speaker. With all that, I think one more speech in favor and one more speech against at this point. Uh, yes. Ms. L. Ebright. Is it Ebright? I want to make sure I didn't put an L in your name. You. Ms. Ms. Ebright. Uh, I wish to speak in favor. Um, as a receiver of some of that uh, sniping, as it was mentioned, uh, I'm in favor of bringing in a little more clarification as we are hoping to you know, extend Westercon to bringing in more con chairs and newer people who are possibly not as well imbued with Westercon traditions as they have been but not stated. I think stating some of these traditions uh, helps those people going forward so that there is less uh, distraction on the side with people having their expectations than met. It was actually only about 30 seconds, so there's a, um, um, let me see here. Um, yes, Mr. Kowalczyk, speaking against. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I too am in favor of more clarification, and I feel for the chairs, I'm sorry you were sniped at. However, I think Mr. Oakes has pointed out uh, some flaws in the current proposal. And I'm sad to see the amendment fail, and therefore I think we need to vote against the entire thing and come up with something better next year. And again, that was only about 20 seconds, so there's a little bit of time left. Someone wishing to speak in favor of the constitutional bylaw amendment? Anyone else wish to speak against? Mr. Yellow. Um, I agree with the previous speaker in that I believe that the opening ceremonies reference really confuses matters and Given the fact that the Oaks Amendment failed, I believe that we should defeat the overall motion. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak either in favor or opposed to this proposal? Uh, Mr. Breitbart, in against or in favor? Against. against. There's about 30 seconds. Actually, more like 20. There is not now and there has never been a shortage of people willing to explain the traditions to any committee who stands still too long. <laughs> <laughs> is there anybody, anybody else who still wishes to speak? Hearing none. Uh, Parliamentary inquiry. Remember, we'll please state their inquiry. Um, if this is voted for, is there a possibility to amend in the ratification? The answer is the proposal could be amended at ratification as long as it doesn't increase the scope. Uh, if it were to do so, it would end, I believe it's similar to the WorldCon one. I'm not absolutely certain. If it increased the scope of it, it would be a new proposal that has to start all over again. You, you'd think I'd remember because I wrote that rule, but then, <laughs> I can't keep it all in my head. All right. All right. Another, Another parliamentary member will state the parliamentary inquiry. Uh, would the text add it? The amendment such as what was proposed be expanding the scope or, or yeah. keeping the scope at this? The chair refuses to rule on the motion even though he's chairing next year's meeting. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's out of my jurisdiction until next year. <laughs> okay. Uh, in that case, on the proposal on this item C2, defining first full day, do I need to read it again? No. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, those in favor of the proposal, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down, the negative has the proposal fails. 